Good evening. My name is Laura J, and I'm a teaching artist with Buffalo Stringworks in Buffalo, New York. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening to learn more about the current political unrest and coup in Myanmar. At Buffalo Stringworks, we care about our students and families so much. Approximately 80% of our student population have families from Myanmar. So, when student families asked for our help to spread awareness about the coup in Myanmar, the teaching artists of Buffalo Stringworks knew that we had to act. As part of this multidisciplinary video, you will hear performances from Buffalo Stringworks teaching artists, as well as friends of Buffalo Stringworks and even students. You will also be hearing from political experts and students and families, and learning of specific ways that you can help. Again, thank you so much for watching this evening. We will begin with a short presentation from Dr. Michelle Benson, Associate Professor of Political Science at the University of Buffalo. Hello, I'm Professor Michelle Benson from the Department of Political Science at the University of Buffalo SUNY. And I'd like to thank Buffalo Strings for inviting me to take part in this program and to help bring attention to the recent military takeover, the coup d'etat in um, Myanmar. So I have a short presentation to share with you all. There we go. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about the current situation in Myanmar and what the international community, what the US government and what individuals can do to bring attention to the situation and hopefully bring Myanmar back to a more democratic state. So Myanmar is a country in Southeast Asia. Its population is about 54 million people. And it is a country with a long history, a rich culture. And I'm not an expert on Myanmar. Um, there are definitely people in this audience who know much more about Myanmar than I do. But what I do know is something about how the international community is responding to this and how the US government is responding to this, this um, recent uh, crisis and what individuals, how individuals might want to approach this to help bring Myanmar back into, onto the path of democracy that it was on before this recent coup d'etat. And so Myanmar was a fragile democracy. Uh, it had moved towards democracy over the last decade and had its first openly contested democratic elections uh, six years ago. It was a real democracy and just for context, um, before its last democratic elections, it was about uh, negative three on the polity democracy score. It moved up to a score of approximately eight on the policy democracy score. And just for reference, China is the score of negative seven on the democracy score. And the United States and Canada, for example, receive a score of 10 on the democracy score. So it was a democracy, but it was a very fragile democracy. And the military held a strong amount of political and economic power. And the government of Myanmar also did persecute the Rohingya ethnic minority group um, and has been doing so over the last of several years. So in November, 2020, the most recent election in Myanmar, um, saw the decrease in support for the military um, in within the government and within the assembly. So Myanmar's military called the results of this November 2020 election to an invalid an election. So the military had lost by a landslide to um, Aung San Suu Kyi's NLD party. And the military therefore suggested without evidence that there was um, fraudulent voting. The Electoral Commission investigated this. They did not find any evidence of a widespread, widespread fraud and they dismissed the army's complaints. Several months passed and very recently, Myanmar's military instituted a state of emergency which began on February 1st. So the state of emergency overthrew the civilian led government and, and led to the arrest of um, prominent politicians including Nobel Lord Aung San Suu Kyi, the president uh, Win Myint, and also led to the arrest of many government officials and assembly members. So this is a photo of the deposed, uh, deposed state councilor of Myanmar, Aung San Suu Kyi, and um, the coup leader, Myanmar Myan Aung uh, Hleng. 
excuse my pronunciation. Um, so currently Myanmar is under military rule. So the military declared a year long state of emergency, communications, phone, internet, social media has been cut off and there is a strict curfew. Members of the legislature and other governmental officers have also been placed under house arrest. Buddhist monks, potential political activists have been detained and Sen Suu Kyi was accused of violating the import and export law for Supporting walkie talkies. Um, and so, in addition to her house arrest, she's likely going to be charged under this um, arbitrary or obs this obscure law, which is, which is rarely enforced. So, the military has, has declared that it will hold new elections at the end of the state of emergency. And so far, they've suggested that this state of emergency will last for a year. But of course, it is anybody's guess whether they will choose to extend the state of emergency even further. Now, not surprisingly, there have been protests in Myanmar to. Um, to argue against this takeover, this, this coup d'etat. Um, the vast majority of the population of Myanmar would like to return to um, a democratic um, state and to a democratic form of government. Um, the crisis has united some groups of all ages and backgrounds in Myanmar, including the Rohingya, members of the LGBT community have joined in the protests and all of them have called for the release of Aung San Suu Kyi and the release of ministers and members of the legislature. There's been an estimated 100,000 people that have gathered in the commercial capital on Wednesday. And according to witnesses, there are even some police that joined in these protests. And of course, there have been arrests and violence against protesters um, from the military. So what has been the international response to this coup d'etat? Not surprisingly, most uh, Western-oriented intergovernmental organizations have condemned this coup d'etat. Now, the United Nations Security Council did meet and they were informed um, and discussed the coup d'etat in Myanmar, but Russia and China do not support any Security Council action or strong Security Council statements on the coup d'etat. So the statement from the United Nations Security Council has been warning against the police using disproportionate force to disperse protesters. There were stronger statements, however, that were released by the United States, France, and the United Kingdom, and other non-permanent members of the Security Council. And the European Union also released a statement um, noting that the European Union condemns in the strongest terms the military coup carried out in Myanmar. The U.S. administration reflects these same sentiments as well. And Biden said on Wednesday, he noted that violence against those asserting their democratic rights is unacceptable and the United States is going to keep calling it out. He also stated that the people of Burma are making their voices heard and the world is watching. We'll be ready to impose, impose additional measures and we'll continue to work with our international partners to urge other nations to join us in these efforts. Now, of course, these statements are very important, but what we'd really like to see is actions. And indeed, the Biden administration has followed through on these words by imposing um, sanctions on the military government. The United States has restricted accounts of military leaders and their families involved in the coup. They've restricted the ability for um, military run enterprises to easily profit in the US, but more can be done along these lines as well. Additional sanctions can be imposed. We could refuse to um, accept uh, imports from Myanmar. We could make it more difficult for Myanmar to export goods to the United States. So. Uh, President Biden did impose strong sanctions, and it's important to note that um, this announcement on Wednesday that he made with the imposition of sanctions was the first time that uh, the president has used punitive measures since taking office. So it was an important diplomatic and uh, strategic step to affect the relationship with Myanmar. But I should note, we should continue to have relationships with Myanmar because it, we there it's in possible to affect action if there's nothing left to affect. So we do want to continue with these diplomatic relationships, I would suggest. So we are able to pressure Myanmar, the Myanmar is the current military to move back towards democracy. But even more important than this is the United States ability to hopefully affect China and pressure China in its response to this Myanmar coup. So what we would really hope is that um, China would support uh, the past electoral results, which is unlikely, um, it is a little bit more likely that China would support the sooner um, response to free and fair elections. The US can also most importantly urge China not to provide financial relief to the government or to the military leaders that have been sanctioned. The US sanctions will have very little effect if that money is then replaced by China. The United States can also make sure that Myanmar remains a continuing topic of discussion in the United 
Nation Security Council, which it has pledged to do. So what can individuals do? Well, what can we do is write our Congress people and senators to urge them to support continued US action on the Republic of the Union of Myanmar. We can support the non-governmental aid and human rights organizations that try to provide aid and awareness to the Myanmar situation. We can do this through donations or joining these organizations. Um, but I should argue that any time that you're, you're donating to an organization or a non-governmental organization, it's important to make sure that your money is being spent well. Uh, for larger organizations, I would suggest you look up their score on charitynavigator.org. For smaller organizations, oftentimes they're covered or there's information on them on guidestar.org. We can write letters to the editor of local or national newspapers to publicize the action um, action by the US and to publicize the current situation in Myanmar and to urge support for new elections in Myanmar or the return or the, the acceptance of the current electoral results in Myanmar. And we can show support for the Burmese community and support Burmese businesses and cultural groups. We can also continue to draw attention to the coup on social media. And very importantly, we can participate in events like these that help draw attention to the recent coup d'etat. So I want to thank you all for supporting Myanmar's return to democracy. I would like once again to thank Buffalo Strings for their energy and action and support for the Burmese community and for helping to bring increased attention to this. I hope that you all enjoy what is certain to be an informative and inspiring program. Thank you very much.
everyone. We are from Buffalo, New York. We are ex-citizens of Myanmar and we believe we are fully responsible to use all the platform to spread the awareness globally and use our voices to speak out the truth about what is happening in our country. On the 1st of February, the Burmese military has seized power and detained our president, state councillor Do Aung San Suu Kyi, and other democratically elected leaders. We are devastated and upset about the views of power and rights of the people. We are standing up against the dictators who usurp power. We as ex-citizens of Myanmar do not agree with this current situation. We want to raise awareness of coup in Myanmar and ensure the war will not accept it. We want the people of Myanmar to know that we are with them. We will not forgotten. We want justice. We want our democracy. All friends among the world, please do not ignore this. We want your support. Please save Myanmar. Please kindly spread this message as much as you can. Every war counts. My name is Teresa. I was born in a Thailand refugee camp. My parents had to flee there from Burma because of what was going on at that time. There was a military oppression going on and my parents had to run from the harsh conditions. There were also multiple other kids who lived there as well. They were born and raised there just like me and now they're all over the country. Because of what's going on right now, there will be more kids who have, who will have to go vote just like me and I really don't want that happening again. So I think the song "We Shall Overcome" is like it's like talking about how their um, people are they're gonna be able to overcome these challenges and like they can like come like they, they can go through the obstacles you know. So the word "some" like someday is talking about how like even though like we're like in hard times right now like one day it's gonna be over. We shall This is very important to us. 
I want the next generation to grow up in democracy. I do not want them to suffer under a military dictatorship. I was born and raised under military rule. Like a flower, democracy had begun to blossom. But now the military has destroyed it. This is why this revolution is so important. I am asking for help from the international community. It is impossible for people inside Burma to fight back. The military overpowered them in every way. We need help from the international community now. Please put pressure on the military. Please take action as soon as possible so that people in Burma can be free. Please help Burma now. We need action. Sanctions are not enough. My name is Shannon Riley and I'm a violin teacher at Buffalo Stringworks. It is my honor today to present to you the piece Metamorphosis written by Burmese composer Ne Mio Ang. This piece is a setting of a traditional Burmese melody that the composer wrote for the Western classical instrument, the violin. And when I reached out to Ne Mio Ang, he had this to say against the military regime. He said, the only real prison is fear and the only real freedom is freedom from fear. Ne Mio Ang is a prolific composer, pianist and singer who was the first Burmese musician to win a Fulbright Award for study in the United States and currently runs the Gitmite Music Center in collaboration with the University of Washington. Please enjoy Metamorphosis. I do not accept the military coup in Myanmar. I grew up under the military rule. I suffered through the horrible things they did to all of us. We do not want our children to suffer through this again. I do not want a repeat of the 1988 uprising and the 2007 suffering revolution. This is why I condemn the military coup. I want the military to stop abusing their power. I am asking for help from the international community. Hello, my name is Blair Saylor. I am a teacher at Buffalo Stringworks. The song I'm going to play for you is an Irish folk song called She Beg She More or So Big So Little.
We are ex-citizens of Myanmar who are committed to freedom and justice. We demand respect for the people's vote from the 2020 democratic election. We support the civil disobedience movement in Myanmar. We stand against the military dictatorship.
I condemned the military coup in Burma. For many years, we suffer under the cruelty of the military. We do not want to suffer anymore. The military has terrorized villages. They burn down villages. They rape villages. They kill villagers. We want all of these horrible things to be done with. To the UN Security Council, European and Western countries, I am pleading with you for your help. Sanctions are not enough. They affect the people more than they affect the army's military. We need more than sanctions. Military rule must completely come to an end. We want democracy. Now, what can you do to help to spread awareness of the current political situation in Myanmar? First, you can help by supporting Burmese-owned businesses in our very own community. Here are four, just to name a few. If you are able, donate to organizations that support refugees fleeing from Myanmar. The Mei Tao Clinic is one of these organizations. Another way you can help is by sharing this cause with your friends, family, and on social media. You can also contact your elected representatives to express your support. In addition, you can sign the change.org petition in support of the citizens of Myanmar. I hope you enjoyed our special presentation this evening and learned just a little bit more about the political unrest in Myanmar and what you can do to help. As our finale for our program, please enjoy a Burmese march performed by Buffalo Stringworks teaching artists, friends of Buffalo Stringworks, and people from all over the world. We hope you enjoy.